And in the red corner, Kun Pon. Sing Prasert. He's 19 years of age, started fighting was 12, he's 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighs in 104 pounds, 25 fights in his professional career for 4 losses only and 7 draws. And his opponent in the blue corner, Silk Chut, Chaw Chan Mani. 16 years of age, started fighting was 10, he's 5 foot 2 inches tall, weighs also within 104 pounds, 20 fights for 2 losses only and 5 draws. Onto their knees for the Wa Kru Ramui, Ramui pre-fight dance of Muay Thai. It is compulsory. In fact, the World Muay Thai Council has recently issued a, an authority stating that any Muay Thai that is not fought without the Ramui preliminary dance will be regarded as a non-official Muay Thai fight. So that's been the decree of the World Muay Thai Council. That's how important they consider is this ritual, this Ramui uh, dance ritual and where the two fighters there are wearing the Mong Kong crowns and where they dance to show their form, their, 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 as well as being an excellent exercise for mental focus. It's a, it is a cultural means of showing respect to ancestors, teachers, camps and all those who participate in the, the sport of Muay Thai. And they're performing his Ra Muay is Kun Pon. Kun Pon, taking a little longer than Silipa. Not that the length of the Ra Muay uh, is any firm indication about how the, the fight will go. It's more, the time is not the, the essence of Ra Muay, it's more the focus and the mental determination that is generated from this this dance ritual of Muay Thai. And there it is, Kun Pon has finished his dance and uh, he'll go across to get his final instructions from the, the referee and then back to their respective trainers for the final instructions as the sacred Mon Kon is removed. Garlands taken from around the neck Final instructions issued and the fighters will come into the centre of the ring where the referee will issue them on the way for the five rounds of Muay Thai. Kun Pon in the red. Silipa in the blue. As is often the case in Muay Thai in Thailand. The first round is used as a probing exercise to test an opponent's strengths and weaknesses. In fact, if you go overseas into Europe where Muay Thai is becoming increasingly popular, you'll find the European fighters that practice Muay Thai you often use the first round as their strongest round. And when they come out and fight in Thailand, they, they often take the Thais by surprise because uh, the tie is used to used to a fairly slow start and when the Europeans come out here they they uh, capitalize upon this not that it means they win too many fights out here they, they they lose most of the big ones at least but still it is a tactic they do utilize by capitalizing upon this slow first round that the tie boxes are renowned for that's the nuance of the course of the sport. The, the first round is, is uh, used as a, a means of expression rather than so much as the, the hard form. Although I have seen knockouts in the first round, they can take place, but normally the first round is a, is a tactical round. You can see here the way in which Kun Pon is moving in onto Silip, Silipar in the, in the blue and Silipar is boxing a bit. He sort of hangs back and... Uh, then let's lose with a good roundhouse kick, but before that he was certainly boxing, trying to bring Kun Poin into his web so that he could then issue out the attacks. Kun Poin in the blue, Silipar, so I say Kun Poin in the red and Silipar in the blue. Silipar. 
deliberately backing into the ropes, trying to force Kunpon in. But Kun, Kunpon's having no bar of it. He's staying in the centre of the ring and executing those roundhouse kicks, which are increasing with power as this round's going on. Kunpon, the red, wild kick. And Silipa stands back and pegs him off with a, a decent sort of roundhouse himself. So, like the look of Silipa in this first round, he's looking very, very confident. Fox is a bit, took a roundhouse there to the body, just as I said that, but nevertheless, I like the look of Silipa. He seems to have a fair amount in reserve as we go to the end of round one. There's that teeth push kick by Kumpon. You can see the way Silipar goes back, but again, I think that was more of a foxing technique rather than being actually pushed heavy by that roundhouse kick. And you can see there the way also that Silipar goes back on the rope after being lightly touched by Kumpon. So a bit of foxing going on by Silipar as we go now into round two, and I'd expect that the action will heat up considerably as this fight progresses. Slapping roundhouse to the shin there by Silipar in the blue. Kunpon comes back with roundhouse to the body. Kunpon now stalking in on to Silipar. And he got through with the roundhouse to the body as well. Silipar. One of those fighters, you never quite know what he's up to. Here he is again, he's moving around, hesitant, then comes in, backs off, sets up his knee, blocks with his shin, then comes bouncing back with a roundhouse. That's Silipar. Here he goes in with a, with a noise as if to say, I'm stirring myself up. You can see Silipar's quite enjoying this fight out there in the blue corner. Here he is, let's go with another oi as he comes in. That's a typical Muay Thai training technique when they use, utilize that way and sort of like you get the impression that Silipar is letting him know that he's doing the training now but he's going to move up a cog or two as this fight goes on. Silipar, I like the look of him, there he goes, charged in again with his roundhouse kicks. His defense is a little bit suspect but he's certainly got a lot of style and character about his moves. And a good round, a uh, push kick there by Silipar and Kun Pon goes right back. Silipar moving around, flashes in with the roundhouse kicks again, upstairs, downstairs. Good work by Silipar, good round by Silipar. There he goes again, snaps him with those roundhouse kicks, then backs Pon Pon right back onto the rope. So Silipar's enjoying this round, he's having fun. Silipar counter kicking, good roundhouse to the body by Silipar. Comes in with almost with a, with a forearm then bounces back with the roundhouse kick. Goes downstairs, good leg kick, then goes across to the body, so Silipar's really doing well this round. Downstairs he goes again, forces Kumpom back. To the body. Silipar's doing a bit of countering, but certain, uh, I mean, should I say Kumpom's doing a bit of countering, but the, the initiative has been taken by Silipar for most of this round. Silipar in the blue. Roundhouse kicks, and there's a good response there by Kumpon. A lot of power in that roundhouse can respond to Silipar. So Silipar wanted to be a little bit careful. He he started to get a wee bit sloppy towards that round that round, and one of his roundhouse kicks was response. The response by by Kumpon was with a thundering roundhouse, and that one really did hurt. But you can see there in the slow motion the way in which Silipar's been using that deep push kick and forces Kumpon right back. Round three. Good round two by Silipar. See what Kunpon can do in this round. But certainly you can see Silipar's got all the answers so far. With his knees and with his roundhouse kicks. Counter kicking now to Kunpon. 
Wimpon stalking. There's Silipar. Silipar moving around. Oh, I see the way he cleverly ducked that head eye kick and then came back with a hard roundhouse kick to the, the legs by Silipar. Silipar snappy there with his legs again. Wild kick by Kunpon. And you can see the way in which Silipar just slips the kick into the midriff region. Oh, Silipar. Fated, and then you saw the way Kumpon didn't know which way to go and ends up on the deck. Silipar back in the ropes. Knee attack by Kumpon, responded by a roundhouse kick. That wasn't a bad kick by Kumpon, that brought the crowd to life. Kumpon. Needed to do something to take the initiative away from Silipar. Silipar. Silipar so far, all these last two rounds, has had the fight in within his reach, within his control. And that's the most important thing that the judges are looking for is what fighter is the ringmaster? Not necessarily how many points he's scoring, but how who is the dominator? Who is the ringmaster? And you can see as far as this fight's been concerned, it's been Silipar all the way. Even when uh, Kumpon gets a few blows in, you can see the way Silipar's got, got the fight under his control. He knows what he's doing. That's Silipar in the blue. Kumpon coming in onto him now. Trying to up the ante a bit. He's trailing behind on points. He needs to do something. You see there Silipar dancing around. Good roundhouse kick to the body. Kumpon looking a bit frustrated there. Good head eye kick there by Silipar. Silipar comes in with a knee, almost with an elbow, testing elbow, then kicks downstairs, then moves around, forcing Kumpon back again. So Silipar again having this round well and truly under his control. Silipar faints back into the ropes. Kumpon comes in onto him. Wild kick by Kumpon and Silipar just slips in a, a couple of easy kicks and uh, certainly after that round, uh, Silipar is in the box seat to win this fight. There it is. See the way in which Silipar just tacked with that leg down for a leg kick and that upset the balance of Kumpon. And Kumpon frustrated and unable to get it within a striking range of Silipar. There's a head eye kick by Silipar. And he follows up with a double one, and that forced me for good body. Saw the second one coming, was able to block it. But overall, the fight so far has been all Silipar's way in the blue. Round four, can Kumpon come back? And how will Silipar handle his advantage? Will he go cruising, or will he attack? Now Kumpon's coming in hard on the Silipar, showing that the fight is not over yet. Roundhouse kicks to the body by Silipar. Kumpon keeps on coming in onto him. Silipar's picking him off though, picking his mark. Kumpon's just sort of charging and delivering everything he's got, but you can see the way, the tactics, the technique of Silipar. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Silipar, roundhouse to the body. What can Kumpon do? Every time he comes in, he takes a lot of punishment. But then again, he can't afford to hang back because he needs to score points and score points fast. Silipar puts in a knee, then attacks with his fist. Elbow attack, double elbow attack. Silipar on the burst here. Kumpon's in trouble. Silipar moving into him, he's down. Well, that was a punch, was it, that did the damage there? Silipar's not going to let it let up now. He's going to keep charging in. Silipar on the attack and a knee attack and down goes Kumpon. That could be it, it could be all over. He's cut. Bad cut to the head there by Silipar. Silipar's elbow attacks have been showing no mercy at all and down goes Kumpon for the, for the third time. And that's it. It's all over. TKO, I'd imagine that even if he could get up, he didn't take the count.
It would be all over because Silipa has issued that hard elbow attack and has cut the head of uh, Kumpon and it's all over. Watch the elbow. A magnificent elbow got through there. And there's a the follow-up punch in the elbow again. Showing no mercy at all is Silipa and Kumpon unable to, can, to withstand the elbow attacks after being softened up in the first three rounds by Slipar with some very heavy kicks and then finished off in close range in this round with the elbow weapon. So Slipar, you can see here with his elbow attacks, too strong for Kunpon in the red. See there that even though Slipar had the upper chance of him, he wasn't going to relent at all. And uh, great courage by Kunpon, but really the the force of Silipar is just too much. And you see the way he finishes off there with his knee attacks. Elbow, elbow cuts, and then he comes in with a knee attack, and then it's the referee wisely calls the end of proceedings. And it's all over Rover for Kunpon in the red.